All right, so uh, this is going to be the video that I promised that. So I was going to uh, compare Chipson Les Paul to a Epiphone Les Paul. So the Chipson Les Paul is, you know, this thing with a, it says custom on it. Of course, it doesn't, they don't always follow the exact same specs and everything. They just try to look like whatever it is that they are trying to look like. Which in this case, it's a custom in that case, that is a standard. Uh, it's in Les Paul standard. And now, comparing the... Now, just one thing. Uh, you know, these are kind of... For the most part, a lot of guitars are kind of a crapshoot. But with these, these are definitely a crapshoot. And you could get something that's really good. You could get something that's total garbage. Um... I guess that could be said kind of for Epiphone as well, mostly with Gibson. <laughs> um, but the store I got this from was down the street. It was a Sam Ash, and I know for a fact that they go that they actually check their guitars and make sure that they are in good good condition. And they have a tech on on site that that makes sure that the guitars don't go up on the wall until they are kind of perfect and all that other shit. And I'm sure they reject bad guitars or whatever. They may have that dumpster rejection thing that Gibson does, but for whatever reason, they don't have... I've never bought a guitar from them that was in horrible condition, and I've never actually played a guitar that was on their floor that was in bad condition. So, needless to say, that one is in perfect condition. It is fine. There is nothing wrong with it. I looked for a flaw in it. I could not find anything. Um, this guitar... Of course, came from a factory in China. They're both from China, but this one came from straight from the factory in China, and whatever quality control at that factory, that that's basically what you're going to get. There's no extra quality control. It doesn't go through it twice. Um, so for this one, um, the there's like minor little bullshit. Uh, issues with it with the finish like the, the littlest you know you have to be a p big pain in the ass to notice this stuff but because I know big pain in the asses exist I did go over it in that kind of way so if you require perfection there are these minute little nothings in the finish and things like that that um that showed up on this guitar that you have to stare for really so it, it was in fairly good condition when I got it the I love the finish it's great the quality as far as the wood everything feels solidly built both guitars also you know feel fairly solidly built doesn't feel like something's gonna fall off or some crap um, the wiring of the two guitars the <laughs> Epiphone wins the wiring um, the wires are of better quality inside the Epiphone, and they are soldered better. So the solder joints are definitely better. I don't think there's anything wrong, like it's not good enough, it's going to fall apart. It's just that it's better in the Epiphone. Um, as far as the pickups go, surprise, the Epiphone wins that one. And I am going to do a, a sound test, but the main reason the Epiphone really wins that is because these give off, at, at certain volumes, these will actually give off feedback. Even though they're wax potted, they are wax potted, but it doesn't matter. They still go, give off certain feedback uh, at high, higher volumes. So they don't pick up like your voice or anything like that, but they will actually give you some feedback um, with that. And that doesn't seem to be true with all these guitars because I have another guitar right on the side of the, the phone that I'm using to film. And that one's, the per, the pickups are perfectly fine. Just everything else is kind of weird. Um, I did even check the measurements of all, you know, like the distance from the knobs to each knob in this way, this way. The distance here is different than the distance here. But that's about it. Everything else is like basically perfect and exactly the same as it is on the Epiphone. And... Let's see, I think there was, um, I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, that's right. The distance from the knobs to the tailpiece here, that's different. So that was another thing. And I checked the tuning pegs. Um, 
The funny thing is the one from China, the, the Chipson, the tuning pegs are basically perfectly spaced between each other, so this, it looks very uniform. And the Epiphone just looks like they eyeballed it and drilled. So even though it's fine, the tuners are fine, uh, it does have a bit of a difference. The Epiphone wasn't, uh, there wasn't as much um, effort put into making sure that the tuning pegs are the same distance from each other and everything. So they kind of, if you really look hard at them, you can tell they're not in the same spot that they should be. Whereas the uh, the Chipson actually has like practically perfect uh, spacing between all the, uh, the uh, tuning pegs and everything. So that's that. The one of the things that I saw in the back of this as far as uh, construction goes, the panel on the back to open up the back. Um, when they put the screws into it, they put it close to the edge of the wood, which is not good because it's that's like its weak point and it could crack. And that's not good, so you have to be very careful when taking the back off. And also there's a part where if you put a screw in uh, in a specific spot, it it pushes the uh, plate on the back upwards onto the actual back of the guitar, and you can't screw it down. So you have to screw the back that plate down very specifically for both of them. So on here, flip this over. These, I'm not, am I on? Yeah, I'm on camera. These, um, if you put, I think this screw in first, this will lift up onto the back of the guitar, and you can't screw it down. So you have to put these three down first and then that one it's very weird same thing with this right here and also when i when i received the guitar it had like sawdust and stuff and it had to be cleaned out with a vacuum and all this other crap other than that it's okay also the, the screws they're not the same screws that you're going to get on a real or on the epiphone or on a gibson they're a lot bigger and the heads just kind of poke out so other than that that was the main issue, main flaws I've had with this guitar. But the quality of the wood, the the look of it is very nice. The sound, you have to kind of adjust your levels or else it'll feed back. But once you adjust the levels, it sounds perfectly fine with the stock pickups. I don't even know how to change pickups. So they're going to stay unless I can find someone to change it. And I'm not going to bring it to Sam Ash because it's a fake Gibson and, you know, I'm worried that the you know, they would like get this thing the fuck out of here. But other than that, um, let's see. So these switches, definitely the, hmm. I mean, the Epiphone feels a little better, but they work. I never had a problem with the switches. Um, so other than that, that's fine. Volume knobs are all okay. They're fine. <laughs> they're what they are. I don't, you know, they're going to be different a little bit because they're different types of knobs, but there's nothing really concerning about that. Um, like the tuner, the tuners are fine. I haven't had a problem with the tuners. I always find that there's a break-in period with every guitar I've ever gotten where you put new strings on them, you got to do a lot of things to them, lubricate the nut and everything, and then stretch the strings out. And then I normally play for about half an hour, and I just play until everything stays in tune. And then once, once I see the strings are tuning properly and staying that way, then that's, the, that's when I finish my setup process there. Um, but one thing that... I, it did come with a um, bowed neck, so when I took it out of the box, I had to do a setup. It was kind of hard to set up because there's a little excessive buzz that I was able to get to be good enough, and it just it doesn't really buzz, but it's just it's fine. It just took some effort to to set up, and uh, yeah, that's that. Whereas with the um, Epiphone, it um, it came just fine. There was no issues. I didn't have to set anything up. 
I, I almost wished there was something to do, but there really wasn't. <laughs> Everything was got cut off by my uh, phone, who can't record, which can't record, for more than 10 minutes. And so I sit here talking to myself, not realizing it. Anyways. So, yeah. Yeah, so this guitar, uh, for the price, um, you could get a fairly nice sounding guitar. A lot of times it will, it won't have this kind of finish here. Like if you wanted a Epiphone with a finish like this, or maybe you wanted one with green or blueberry burst or whatever, you're going to spend a lot more than if you were to just go with um, a Chipson, which this goes for, this went for 220 um, and this was like, you, you normally pay like 400 and something or 400 for this. I paid a little more because I got it down the street and I wanted to make sure that the quality of the instrument was good. So I paid uh, about 50 more than that, plus tax. So, um, but for less than the cost of this, you can have one of these cool finishes. You could also, of course, you know, go ahead and, and do something like make a custom whatever, have a custom logo, put your name on the headstock, so you have like a signature guitar or something like that. And you could also tell them to leave out hardware if you don't want it, so you really just don't care about these pickups, which a lot of people don't. You don't have to have that. So if you're planning on upgrading the guitar, you don't need all this. You, you could just tell them, give you the body, finish the guitar, you know, put the finish on it, and just leave the hardware out, and you'll just take care of that. But other than that, you know, with Epiphone, I'm not going to do that. And if, you know, if I get like a custom thing like that, it's it's going to cost more, way more than if I actually customized this. So that's that. So the jack is fine. It's tight. They both have plastic, uh, these plastic, if I can ever remember what those are. Whatever. Those things, the plates on there. They're plastic, but yeah. And last thing I, I heard myself talking about in the video was that uh, before I got cut off was the tuning, I believe, or the setup process or something. But, uh, yeah, so other than that, definitely the better guitar is definitely the Epiphone as far as sound, build quality, and... um anything like that but for the price this isn't that bad uh considering you get a guitar with the visual appeal of something you would pay more for in an epiphone um that's nice so if you're looking for a looker um these are really cool Especially, like I said, if you're going to upgrade or, you know, if you're like me, I just play in my, I play in my house. I don't, I'm not in a band. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. And I just play for fun in my house. And it's not really going to be a big thing if you have some decent effects and you can play good enough. You can make just about any guitar sound okay. I mean, for the most part, it's in your hands, not the pickups. And a lot of it can be your amps and your, your effects and shit. And today you can get some great sounding like amp simulators, whether it be on your computer or your phone or your tablets. Um, you can get stuff like that that will sound, you know, fairly good. Even if you're poor as shit, you can have a crappy amp and plug in some nice effects or a speaker or something. And you can get some really good effects even for free technically free. I mean, you do have to have some kind of computer to, to use it, but that's what I do. I normally just run these kind of amp, sim amp simulator effects into uh, an amp, um, and it sounds great to me. <laughs> um, and yeah, so, but this sounds great. Um, so, I don't know what else to do other than do a sound test here and compare the two guitars the way they sound. So I'm just going to come up with a generic riff and play it and um, see what the two sound like. So be right back. <laughs> 